Hello. Thank you for your interest in the Independent Order of Oddfellows. My name is Pete Lewis, and I am an Oddfellow, a member of Stephen Terry Lodge No. 59, located in Portland, Connecticut. I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about our order, its history, and its accomplishments. Whenever I mention our order, I'm often asked, what is Oddfellows? Most people have heard the name, but don't know much about the organization, so let me tell you a little bit about our history. The Independent Order of Oddfellows is a global, benevolent, fraternal organization. As an organization, the Independent Order of Oddfellows, or IOOF, aims to provide a framework that promotes personal and social development. The command of the IOOF is to visit the sick, relieve the distressed, bury the dead, and educate the orphan. In the broadest sense, Oddfellows exists to improve and elevate the character of mankind. Oddfellows use a three-ring symbol with the letters F, L, and T. Those letters stand for friendship, love, and truth, which we believe should be basic guidelines to live by. The order has a lodge structure with a sovereign Grand Lodge of the United States in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Grand Lodges with jurisdiction in each state, and member lodges within each state. This traditional structure is still maintained. Members advance to different degrees as odd fellows by following the orders, teachings, and ceremonies. Another question I often hear is, when did odd fellows start? Well, no one really knows. What is said to be the earliest printed record of an odd fellows lodge appears in a reference to a lodge meeting at a Globe Tavern in England in 1748. The lodge was number nine, so apparently there were at least nine associated Odd Fellows Lodges at that time. The order came to the North American continent in Baltimore, Maryland on April 26, 1819, when a gentleman named Thomas Wilde and four members of the order from England instituted Washington Lodge number one. While Oddfellows as an organization is sizable and long-lived, most people don't know a great deal about the order. This is largely because since its beginnings, the independent order of Oddfellows has sworn its members to secrecy regarding the teachings, ceremonies, and operations of the order. Remember, we're talking about a very old organization, over 250 years old. This secrecy was an important part of the order when it began, and the tradition has continued even today. In this way, we honor the history and original intent of the order. It is unfortunate that honoring these traditions has led to speculation by many that the order is some sort of secret society with a less than benevolent agenda. The requirement for secrecy was much more serious in the early days of Odd Fellowship. In those days, monarchies and organized religions were quite opposed to groups of ordinary people banding together to support each other and work together toward a shared cause outside of government or church structures. Such groups threatened the control of the common man by government or organized religion. It is often remarked that Oddfellows is a rather strange name for an organization and many are curious about the origin of this name. Again, there is no documentation of the origin of the name, largely because of the need for secrecy in the early days of the order. There are multiple theories. Some books claim to trace Odd Fellowship back to Roman times, when members of the Roman legions in England were called fellow citizens. Others believe the name originated from the behavior of helping others. In 18th century England, those who assisted others less fortunate were often considered uh, odd. Frequently, members of the order would leave food and other necessities on the doorsteps of the homes of people down on their luck. Speculation about who would leave such assistance for common people often was answered with, it must have been that group of odd fellows. Now, there is another theory that I think is more likely the origin of the name. 
this theory is based on the economic and social structures of the 18th century. In those days, in large cities and settlements, there were guilds organized for members of specific trades. But in smaller towns, hamlets, and settlements, there were not enough local tradesmen in any single trade to start and maintain any specific trade guild. There were, however, lots of individual tradesmen of various trades. It's thought that to reap the same benefits of security, safe haven, and assistance offered by larger guilds, these independent tradesmen form from odd trades banded together to form lodges of odd fellows. Throughout its history, Odd Fellows members have come from all walks of life. There are several notable figures you may not realize were members of the order. Here's a list of several Odd Fellows you may recognize. Ulysses S. Grant, 18th President of the United States. Rutherford Hayes, 19th President of the United States. William McKinley, 25th President of the United States. Warren Harding, 29th President of the United States. Franklin Roosevelt, 32nd President of the United States. Harry Truman, 33rd President of the United States. Schuyler Colfax, 17th Vice President of the United States. Sir Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Williams Jennings Bryan, past U.S. Secretary of State. Earl Warren, past U.S. Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Charles Lindbergh, American aviator, author, inventor, explorer, and social activist. Charlie Chaplin, comedic actor and film director. Red Skelton, comedian. Burl Ives, entertainer. And Wyatt Earp, law officer of the American Old West. There's also another branch of Odd Fellows some people have heard of, the Rebecca's. This branch is easier to document. As a member of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, Schuyler Colfax, Jr., along with Representatives Martin of Mississippi and Steele of Tennessee, were appointed to prepare a ritual of ceremonies pertaining to the Rebecca degree and report at the 1851 Odd Fellow session. On September 20, 1851, the IOOF approved the degree and Colfax was considered the author and founder. It was initially designed as the female auxiliary of the IOOF, but now allows both female and male members. As mentioned earlier, Schuyler Colfax went on to become Vice President of the United States under Ulysses S. Grant. He was inaugurated March 4, 1869 and served until March 4, 1873. So now that you know some of our history, let me tell you a little bit about what Odd Fellows do today. The IOOF conducts an annual pilgrimage to the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. This is a solemn ceremony of remembrance for those that have given their lives to preserve the American way of life. This privilege was afforded to the Odd Fellows and Rebecca's in 1934 by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. No other fraternal organization has been granted this honor. The IOOF also conducts an annual United Nations Pilgrimage for Youth. Young delegates from Odd Fellows Lodges, along with a contingent of adult counselors, travel to the UN each summer. Every state in the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, and every province of Canada except one has been represented and students have participated from Denmark, Cuba, and Australia. This pilgrimage provides exposure to the activity of governments and the work of the United Nations. Alumni by the thousands look back upon this experience as a crucial time when their ideals have fallen into place and given purposeful direction to their lives. Oddfellows Lodges support their local communities through supporting local food and fuel banks, and many lodges have scholarship programs to support youth education. Oddfellows have started and maintain several not-for-profit homes as charitable facilities for the aged and sick. In Groton, Connecticut, Fairview was founded in 1892 
by the Connecticut Independent Order of Odd Fellows Grand Lodge as a nonprofit senior housing and health care provider. This home continues its mission today. The Connecticut Eye Bank and Visual Research Foundation in New Britain was founded in 1961 by the Independent Order of Odd Fellows of Connecticut. This facility is part of a network that sends corneas for transplant to emergency cases in the lower 48 states, giving sight back to many who would otherwise go blind. On a lighter note, Odd Fellows and Rebecca's participate each year in the Rose Parade in Pasadena, California, by constructing and displaying a parade float. The float is viewed by approximately 700,000 people who line the five-mile parade route and by at least 70 million more via national and international television broadcasts. It's even viewed in China. This is truly a very large viewing audience that sees this work of art, hears the Oddfellows and Rebecca's name, and learns of the Order's fraternal mission. Oddfellows and Rebecca's have actively supported the Arthrit Arthritis Foundation since 1986, embracing the opportunity to have a role in the search for a cure for arthritis by volunteering time, donating money, and devoting efforts at the local, state, and national levels. Contributions have allowed the Arthritis Foundation to sponsor research that has resulted in major treatment advances for most arthritis conditions. Over five million dollars have been raised and contributed over the last 15 years. Internationally, Oddfellows supports humanitarian efforts through the construction and maintenance of the SOS Children's Village in Batambang, Cambodia. The construction cost of this project was approximately $1,550,000 U.S. dollars, with an annual running cost of approximately $200,000 U.S. dollars. So now you know a little bit more about our order. I hope you'll have a better understanding of what it means if you ever hear someone else declare, I am an odd fellow. Thank you.